What's up everybody? Insidious the Red Door is out. Let's talk about it. All right, everybody, so I saw Insidious last week, on last Thursday, and when I went into the movie, I didn't really have any preconceived notions. I've always been a fan of the Insidious franchise, so going into this, I didn't have more or less of an excitement going in. What I was what I was looking forward to was the fact that it was picking up from part two, the events of part two, which to me, when you start a franchise and you have people get attached to the characters and the, the actors slash actors of the franchise, whenever you branch off, you're always taking a risk. But for Insidious, the good thing about that is so many characters were at the forefront here. You had Josh and his family. You know, Josh was a, was a main character. Dalton was a main character. Um, the wife and the, and the other brother were a little, they were involved, but they were not the forefront. They weren't the ones as, as mainly involved as Josh and Dalton were. You also had the psychic and then Specs and his crew. And you could branch off, which is what they did in part three and then the last key. I wasn't the biggest fan of the last key, um, but I was excited to see this one pick up right from the events of part two. So, my review is this. I really liked it. I've watched and I've read a lot of comments and, and reviews over the past few days about this, and it's kind of mixed. Here's the thing, here's why I, what I've been seeing, and I want to re retort with how I feel about this. So. A lot of people said it was boring, and it took a lot to get going on. It took it took, it took a while to get going. Let me explain, and let me let me counter that because it had a lot of moving parts. Joss's relationship with his father, who was missing. Josh's strained relationship with his wife. Josh's strained relationship with his kids, specifically Dalton. Dalton. Coming to, coming to terms with the fact he kind of forgot what happened to him for a year when he was a kid. And Josh, the same deal. There was a lot of, of, of things that had to be set in place. If they were to just gloss over all that and just go to jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, horror, 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 it wouldn't have been as effective as I think it came to be. I literally jumped two times in this movie. There were two times in this movie that got me to jump. And I think the last time that I jumped in a, in a, a movie even the slightest was uh, Smile. I think it was the last one that got me. This one got me twice. And it, it harkens back to what I said in my last review about Boogeyman. If you've got a story, I, you, like, I don't look at that as boring. When you're trying to build something, you draw people in to the story. You draw people into the characters. You draw people into what's being... Uh, what we're having to learn and glean from all these different characters. So you're already kind of like, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then when the jump scares come, they're completely taken off, off, off guard because you're focused on the character. Insidious, this one did a very good job of that. And then like, again, I'm going to harken back to Boogeyman. I said the same thing about that. Boogeyman had a story with well-acted characters that dealt with some real situations that made you focus on that and made it more relate made it relatable so that when the jump scares happened they were much more powerful much more impactful than just you know jump scare jump scare jump scare jump scare and they they had more meaning to them which increased their effectiveness it it did take some time to get going and if i had to knock it that be the only one I would, the only knock I would say, and I, I well, two knocks in the entirety of the series of the Insidious. I and I think I realize why I put Conjuring above Insidious. I've never been a fan of the Further. I think it's a silly concept. I think it's a silly, a silly title. I think I know it's just like it, it just it just seems corny to me. I've always thought that aspect of it was corny, but. Once all the loose ends started to tie in this one, it was the best use of the further that there's been 
in the entire series in this movie, at least for me. Now, granted, I, I might be on an island in not being a big fan of the whole concept to begin with. So um, that's it, 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 it. So that that might be the case. But I am I, I am now I very much enjoyed how it was used because it didn't seem to be used as the main focal point like it was in the past. And I think that's the evolution of the story. We already know what it's about. There's no need to harp on it. There's no need to, to shove it down our throats, but it's still a part of what these characters are dealing with. So it was used in a very strong way in this one. I think the, the best use of the further. Um, the acting, as, as always, in all these movies, everyone plays their role to a T. And learning more of the backstory to Josh and his dad and you know things. The great spoiler. I'm not gonna give you any spoilers, okay? But you can glean that from the from the trailer. Um, everything ties in very well, and I, I liked it. I, I liked it. I still have Boogeyman for this year as my favorite horror movie of the year so far. But this one was very very good. If you get a chance, I, and I will always push this to you all, stick stay away from the streaming service for a little bit. Go to the theaters. It's a different. It's a different perspective and a different experience in a theater. Um, I've watched p countless movies on streaming, and I and th those movies do not go to theaters. Most of the ones that I see, and I enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it. But the level in which it, a movie grips me, I need the whole experience. I like to go by myself. I, you know, I'm just in there, focus on the movie, and that's 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 my happy place. You know what I mean? So, and, and I can I can get invested and feel every sound, every everything if the movie's effective. Um, like for Evil Dead, I talked about Evil Dead Rise. I saw it in theater, and it wasn't effective. It never drew me, drew me in. I was never like on the edge of my seat, focused on that movie, like I was with this one or Boogeyman or some of the other ones. But if you're looking for a good horror movie, we have a few more weeks until Talk To Me. But this is a great movie to, to, to get us get us there. So if you're new here, this is the Glad Horror Channel, the best horror channel here on YouTube. If you like what you saw, like this video, subscribe to this channel. I have a, a plethora of horror reviews and I'm gonna be bringing back the history of horror in the next couple weeks. So thank you for uh, joining me. We'll see you guys next time.